Hey there guys, well that was quick wasn't it? It literally only took you a couple of seconds to click on this video from episode 12 so it's good to see you again, hope you had a good little break from me for the last couple of seconds. But yes, it is the second video of my double whammy this week and of course, if you can't count, after episode 11, we've got episode 12. So sit back and, well, enjoy again. To begin the second video that you'll be getting off me today is of course the episode 12s and this is a much more exciting episode than episode 11 because this is of course the start of a series finale of course apart from some series like series 6 and series 7 and series 3 where technically Utopia had already started the series finale. Some of these episodes are still just single parters but most of them are to do with the series finale which is of course extremely exciting. So let's start off with episode 12 of series 1, which is an episode I've already reviewed on the channel, which is Bad Wolf. So to begin, we are going to be talking about Bad Wolf, and this of course is an episode I've already reviewed during my Regeneration series. So for anyone who has seen that review, you already know my opinions. For anyone who has not seen my review on that, I suggest you check it out for a more in-depth review. But Bad Wolf, to me, is a good episode. Um, it's not bad. I, I always enjoy going back and watching it. But I always found it a little bit more uneventful than uh, The Parting of the Ways. I think um, them getting trapped in the game station is, is dead good and everything. And I thought that was quite interesting. Um, but I don't think that much happened in Bad Wolf uh, until the end, when we actually discovered that it was the Daleks that were sitting on the edge of the solar system and that they had abducted Rose and the uh, transmat beams were not killing people, they were actually sending them to the Dalek ship. So, Bad Wolf's a good episode, I guess, but I don't think the overall story of this finale really kicks in until the last 15, 10, 15 minutes of Bad Wolf, really. So, that's nothing against the episode. It is a good episode, but I just think maybe it's a bit slow, maybe it's just a bit uneventful. Um, compared to the parting of the ways, but that takes nothing away from it. Bad Wolf is a very, very good episode, so I'd still probably give it a 7 out of 10. Now into series 2 with Army of Ghosts, which saw a confrontation we'd been waiting for um, in the modern series, which was of course the Cybermen versus the Daleks, and the Doctor was stuck in the middle. And of course, throughout Doctor History, a story where the Doctor is stuck in the middle of a wall between two of his greatest enemies always ends up being a very good story. And so was this. I think um, it, it was, this story went at a very good pace, I think, Army of Ghosts, because uh, they arrived on Earth and of course they were just ghosts and you know, the mystery of who the hell they were. And uh, the revelation that they were cybermen, them, I thought, was, um, was a very interesting one. And to see Torchwood as well, well, Torchwood London was also very good because uh, we got introduced to, to Yvonne Hartman. And uh, we saw a lot of alien artifacts which have been in Doctor Who before, which was quite a nice little nod. And uh, seeing Jackie actually play quite a main part in this episode was very interesting also. So, yeah, it was, it was quite a good episode, quite different as well. And um, the way that the workers, as you can see, were slowly getting dropped off, you know, one, one by one as the side men were infiltrating was also a very good effect. And there was also the mystery of the sphere as well, which uh, was very intriguing. So... I think this was the perfect episode to start a series finale because it led into the the, story, the series finale and the story very, very well, at a very good pace, it introduced one of the villains, and it was a very good mysterious episode that uh, left you gagging for more when you saw that the Daleks were actually uh, what was inside the sphere. So I think Army of Ghosts is an absolutely thrilling episode, and... Uh, Without a shadow of a doubt, the one of the best first parts to a two-parter in New Who, so I, I'd probably give Army of Ghosts a 9 out of 10. Of 
on to series three now and we are of course on to the sound of drums where we got to see a proper look at John Sim as the master and the Doctor Jack and Martha returned to present day and just like the Army of Ghosts this went at a brilliant pace and it progressed the series three finale story very very well. Um, I love the way that the three of them were on the run because I just thought John Sim as the master really stood out because seeing the master as prime minister just gave him so much great power and uh, like the scene where he gassed uh, some of his politicians and then did the four knocks, you could just see that this master was just absolutely demented. And throughout the series, of course, we got little glimpses of um, the Jones family being under control by um, the Sax, well, Harold Saxon's uh, men, you could say, uh, his his little minions. And uh, yeah, to see to see them controlling the Jones family once again was very good because it kind of tied up a few loose ends we'd seen throughout the series and uh, to see the three of them on the run I think was very good because it really it really showed how much power the Master had over the Doctor. The Doctor was literally powerless. He didn't have his TARDIS. He had literally nothing but his sonic screwdriver um, and it, we got to see the real practical side of the Tenth Doctor, um, you know, the way that they had to make their way onto the Valiant as well. It was very good uh, seeing Martha's house blow up with a, with a bomb that was behind the TV it just this episode really made the master seem untouchable and i think that was what this series 3 finale really needed because we'd seen how mental he was and how evil he was in um in in the end of utopia but in this we really got to see how powerful he actually was and john sim was just absolutely unbelievable there were some standout scenes in this like when the doctor was on the phone to the master and they were talking about gallifrey and when the doctor and they were eating chips you know it was a real nice scene where he was talking about when he was younger on Gallifrey, so there were some really good standout scenes in this. The chemistry between the Doctor and the Master really hit home in this, and the ending, of course, was very climactic because it looked like all hope had seemed lost when the Doctor was aged, Captain Jack was taken prisoner, and Martha was left on a planet that was being invaded by Toclophane on her own. So it, it literally, this episode ended the way that it started. Our three, our trio, was were completely powerless, and the Master was on top. And he was definitely on top of the world. So Sound of Drums couldn't have done a better job at progressing the Series 3 finale. What a great story this was. I give it a 9 out of 10. Here we have another episode that I have reviewed in my Regeneration series. And was the only good half of the Series 4 finale. The Stolen Earth. The reason why this was the only good half is because this couldn't have been done better. I mean, this was a very ambitious episode that Russell took on, um, getting all the companions of Modern Who together, balancing out their screen time, giving them all an actual part to play in the story, not making any of them go to, to no use at all. And he did very well introducing all of them. Uh, you, you know, the start with planets in the sky, the Doctor getting lost, all the companions working together to try and find him, Harriet Jones coming back, the Daleks. It was a lot to do in this episode, and I think Russell did it absolutely brilliantly. I'm not going to go on to Journey's End because that's next week, but uh, once again, for anyone who uh, has watched my review on, on, on Stolen Earth and Journey's End, you'll know my views already, but uh, for anyone who has not, I really like Stolen Earth. Um, couldn't have done a better job, really, and it's, it's a real shame that Journey's End kind of ruined this, this immense build-up that we had. Um, and at the end, I, you can't talk about Stolen Earth without the end. The Doctor's regeneration. Well, I say regeneration. And my favourite character, of course, in this entire episode is the Dalek that shot the Doctor at the end because the Doctor and Rose were about to have the most lovey-dovey running through sunflowers with rainbows. You know, a moment where they run and they hug and they kiss and they're like, oh, I love you all. Oh, and I was about to cringe and vomit. And then that Dalek shot the Doctor and I... I never thought I'd be pleased to see the Tenth Doctor get shot, but I really, really was. And I remember exactly where I was when I watched this. The cliffhanger literally made me completely unbearable uh, to, to wait a week till the next one. But yeah, Stolen Earth is a brilliant episode, and all I can say is it built up into the series finale so well. And to see all of our favourite companions in the same episode was just a nostalgic feeling. So I'd probably give the Stolen Earth once again a 9 out of 10. On to series five and we have another episode that built into a series finale very very well and just like journey's end the big bang 
absolutely ruined the Series 5 finale. I mean, what a mess that is. So anyway, I'm not going to go into what a mess that was. That's for next week. But the Pandora opens just like the Stolen Earth, was a brilliant build-up to what could have been a very brilliant Series finale. I think the Pandora opens was absolutely brilliant. Seeing all the enemies come together, you could say that was quite crammed, but I don't think it was. I think, as you can see on the, on the screen right there, the speech at the 11th Doctor game is, is, is probably one of the most well-known and notable speeches that any other Doctor has ever gave before. I think the setting of Stonehenge, I think, was very iconic and very eerie as well. And to see the Pandorica and what the mystery was, I think, was uh, also very mysterious. To see the Sidemen with the no head as well, trying to go after Ermi, that was another very spooky um, spooky scene. So I think the Pandorica Opens had a very eerie sort of atmosphere to it, and that's what I really enjoyed. And the ending to the Pandorica Opens, just like the ending of Stolen Earth, was very shocking because we found out that the Pandora Coropens was actually for the Doctor after thinking that it was for the greatest of enemies and it is supposed to hold the most dangerous being in the universe. For that to then end up being the Doctor was quite a shocker. So I'll admit the Pandora Coropens really shocked me at the end. The cliffhanger was brilliant as well, seeing the Doctor getting trapped inside the Pandorica. Too bad that it was completely and utterly ruined one week later. Nevertheless, that takes nothing away from how good the Pandora Crotons was. It was an absolutely fantastic episode. The speech was brilliant. Seeing all the villains in it was brilliant, apart from the Paradigm Daleks. But yes, the Pandora Crotons, brilliant introduction to another series finale. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. So like I said uh, in episode 11, when I was talking about The Lodger, I am not a fan of the uh, Craig Owings story episodes. I, I'm i not going to repeat myself uh, in that video. I did say it's not because I don't like them. I'm just not that interested in them. But once again, seeing the Doctor in a human life and seeing him meet Craig again was very nice. And seeing the Doctor work in a shop I thought was quite hilarious. But why did they have the Cybermen in this? I mean, they literally could have had anything, any monster at all. They could have even created just a small monster, a one-off monster that no one would have to see ever again. But they had to use the Cybermen, which I do not get. I really don't. I think they were just there because it was just a way of saying, oh, we'll have, let's just say we've had the Cybermen in Series 6. We'll put them in this episode. It was, uh, it was wrong to have them in it. And uh, the fact that they were defeated by love was possibly one of the worst cringy endings ever i mean this is one of the annoying things about doctor who sometimes it's like they're deliberately trying to destroy really iconic enemies i mean victory of the daleks what did that do to the daleks it literally made them known online as the skittle daleks or the smarties you know the amount of multicolored jokes you get with them daleks they're literally they are pretty much known now for being different colours and that's the only reason they're like typecast for being different colours that's all people remember them they don't remember them Daleks for having a special weapon thing on their back with secret weapons they don't remember any of that they don't remember them for their deep groaning voices they remember them because they were different colours and they looked hilarious and once again putting the Sidemen in this and making them getting defeated by love just made them seem embarrassing and humiliating and useless and that's not what the Sidemen are they are ruthless creatures one of my favourite villains in Doctor Who, and to see them go down the way they did in this episode was sad to see. So I think Closing Time maybe would have worked better if it just had a one-off monster like uh, The Lodger did. So yeah, Closing Time, I'm not a fan of the Craig Owings episodes anyway, and the fact that the Sidemen were misused in this and the ending as well just made it even worse. So I'd probably go as far as to say The Lodger is better than Closing Time, so I would probably only give Closing Time a 4 out of 10. And finally, we have, from Series 7, Nightmare in Silver. Now, the only good thing about Nightmare in Silver that I find is that the Sidemen, pardon the pun, got a well-deserved and a well-needed upgrade. Because I don't mind the Cybermen from uh, the Lumix Cybermen. I think they, the look that they have is quite, you know, the, the blank look on their face is what, what's always been good about the Sidemen. So I really like that. But I just thought at times they were a bit too robotic. You know, the reason why I love the 60s Sidemen is because they were so close to human, you could literally believe that they were still 
very, very human. And that's what made it very, very strange to think that there is actually still a human under there. But with the uh, Lumix Cybermen, I just thought that they were too robotic. Um, so I'm glad that they got the upgrade they did because they, you know, they were slow before, they were very loud, they couldn't sneak up on you. They weren't the, you know, the very deadly killers that they could be. And I tell you what, in Nightmare and Silver, the upgrade they got, the way that they can they can kind of stop time and, and go really quickly and kill you, they are literally very close to being undefeatable. And I cannot wait to see them in Series 8 now just to see how they are defeated because they are literally untouchable now. And I really am glad that the Cybermen have been given that because I've always thought that they've been humiliated and overshadowed by the Daleks. And the Daleks have been pretty, well, humiliating themselves recently. So... For the Cybermen to kind of get this upgrade, I'm re very, very grateful for, and I'm glad Neil Gaiman did that. But the episode itself, I'm not a fan of. It centred around the children. The, the, why were they even in it? I mean, Angie and Artie are really annoying, and I hope they never, ever come back. I mean, it's not the child actors, it's just their characters I find extremely bloody annoying. And the story that was Nightmare and Silver was not one that I was that interested in. I wasn't that bothered about the ending. I thought I wasn't a fan of how the episode ended. Um, so, you know, apart from the ending and the fact that the children were in it and they really put me off this episode, the only good thing that I really like about Nightmare and Silver is the upgrade that the Sidemen got. That's pretty much it. So many people will like this story and I can understand why, but for me, I just find it very hard to watch with the characters that we meet and the kids that are in it as well. And I also must stress that when Matt turned here, uh, was it Mr. Clever? I think it was Mr. Clever. When Matt was uh, playing Mr. Clever and uh, the Doctor and him were kind of fighting each other's consciousness, I really found the Doctor annoying in this. I mean, when he said fantastic and Alon Z, I was just like, no, no, you, you, you don't do that. You don't try and say fantastic in a Northern accent. You don't try and say Alon Z like the 10th Doctor. You're the 11th Doctor, you say Geronimo, you've completely ruined them two famous, famous quotes from the previous two Doctors. So a few things in Nightmare and Silver I really disliked. The only thing that came out of this, the only positive thing to come out of this episode was the Sidemen's upgrade, really. So apart from that, that's all I can really say on it. So I'd probably give Nightmare and Silver a 5 out of 10, being generous. So to conclude episode 12's Believe Me, this was a very, very difficult decision. I'm literally stuck between episode 12 of series 2, series 3, series 4, and series 5. Literally all of them are absolutely brilliant introductions to a series finale. In some cases, episode 13 ruins them, but let me remind you, I am not judging episode 12 on the overall finale. I'm judging it just on episode 12 itself. I'm judging it on how it introduced the series finale, and I think uh, Bad Wolf didn't really introduce it till the last couple of, of minutes, uh, last 10 to 15 minutes, like I said. Uh, Army of Ghosts introduced it very, very well. Uh, the Sound of Drums introduced Series 3 very, very well. Stolen Earth introduced very, very well, and same with the Pandora Opens, but the one that I am choosing is the one that I enjoy watching the most. It is the most nostalgic. And despite it being utterly ruined in uh, in episode 13, I think the writer who written this did the best job and had the hardest job fitting in all the companions, giving them all good screen time and giving them all good use in the episode. And like I said, seeing them all in the same episode was just, just such a good nostalgic feeling. Believe me, this is a very difficult decision and I am expecting a lot of different opinions in the comments. My favourite episode 12 goes to the Series 4, Stolen Earth. And like I said, I just thought Russell did a brilliant job putting every single companion in it because it was easy to get one companion lost or to make one companion loose, useless and completely ruin the story. So I think Russell did an exceptional job and that is why I am giving the best possible episode 12 to so the So then, there's episode 12 of my best possible series. I hope you've enjoyed this double whammy of videos this week and you'll be getting two more next week. So, along with the other video, don't forget to hit a like on this video, subscribe if you still haven't subscribed, and once again, comment below your favourite episode 12. And what I might do is I might take comments from episode 11 and 12 and answer them both in episode 14 next week. So, at the end of the second video, I'll answer comments from the previous week. 
yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do something like that. So yes, guys, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, comment below and all that other stuff. And yes, have a good weekend, take care, and I'll see you next Wednesday for whatever our topic of the week video that we're going to do, which I, I really don't know what that is yet. But yeah, have a good week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.